From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Lieutenant Cal Mervin, Mr. Dollar, State Highway Police. They relayed your call to me. Good. I was just checking in, Lieutenant. You said to keep in touch in case I left civilization. Well, you haven't left it far. I recognize the number. Oh? You're at Jake's Bar and Grill on the Nogales Highway. Yep. You didn't need a uranium hunter's outfit to go prospecting in that little nugget. Well, I'm going up into the Santa Rita Mountains around Primrose Camp. You're playing a hunch or have you got a lead? Well, both. But at the moment, it's more hunch than lead. I just wanted you to know where to start looking in case I disappear. Now, look, Mr. Dollar, I've got every man on the force out now looking for that gang of killers and the $100,000 payroll they stole. If I have to add you to the list, that's about all I'll need. Relax, Lieutenant. If things work out, you may find us together. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Jake's Bar and Grill somewhere on a highway in southern Arizona. To the home office, Mid-States Industrial Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Primrose Matter. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item four, three dollars and sixty cents. To Jake Meager for information and incidental beverages. The Chipper Nitson gang had hijacked an armored truck in Kansas City and escaped with a hundred thousand dollar payroll. Two nights ago, they'd shot their way through a roadblock in southern Arizona, killed a state trooper, and left one of their own members dead in the road. Then the other three had simply disappeared. The information from Jake? That old Pomp Bardell operated a tourist camp and service station 14 miles up a dead-end road in the nearby mountains. And it seems that Pomp had acquired a new nephew within the last 24 hours, a complete stranger to Jake. There was only one way to check it out. Drive up to Primrose Camp. Hi, how are you? Uh, want me to fill up the tank? Yeah, might as well. Ah. Probably won't take much, though. Hey, how much farther does the road go? Just a couple of miles. Oh, too bad. I was just starting to enjoy the scenery. Hey, you know, you're lucky living up here in the hills. Got some real pretty country around you here. Yeah. I thought I might spend a little time in it if I could find a place to stay... I guess there'll be some more tourist cabins on down the road. No, huh? no, these are the only ones. Oh, oh, well. Well, in that case, you got yourself a border. Huh? Took less than four gallons. Yeah, I figured it wasn't that much. Hate to get caught short, though, up here away from the highway. Now, uh, about that cabin. Oh, sorry, we're all full up. Oh? You, you'll, you'll find some places down on the highway. Well, there wouldn't be much point in that. I was planning to do some prospecting, get around a little on foot... This would be a good spot to work from. I, I, I got no vacancies. How about the oil and water? Oh, yeah, you better take a look, I guess. Bad country for a tenderfoot. You get in a lot of trouble. Such as what? Uh, snake bite, get lost, fall off a cliff. A lot of things. <laughs> oh, I've been in a place or two before. Uh, best you forget it, son. Oil's all right. It's funny, those cabins look empty. No cars parked in front of them. They're, they're all rented. And the water's all right, too. Well, who are they rented to? Vacationers? Prospectors? They couldn't say. It'll be a dollar twenty-six. All right. Hardly worth stopping for. There you are. Keep the change. Thanks. Call again. Yeah, yeah, maybe I will. When Pop Bardell gets by. I'm Pop Bardell. Well, you can't be. You don't fit the description. What do you mean? Well, I was told Pop Bardell had started talking a leg off me before I even got my mouth open. That he'd not only sell me a tank of gas, but also two quarts of oil I didn't really need and a handful of fake ore samples and rent me a couple of cabins whether I was planning to stay or not. Who told you that? Jake Meager down at the highway. Oh, Jake. Jake's one talks too much. Maybe. Jake had not a said... Hey, what is it? 
nephew. You're about through out there. I need a hand in here. Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm all through. Oh, that the nephew Jake was telling me about? Uh, yeah. yeah, that's him. Oh, nice looking fella. Arrived yesterday unexpectedly, Jake tells me. Yeah, 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 that's, it, that's right. Comes from Tulsa, I understand. Tulsa? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, from Tulsa. Uncle! I'm coming. Well, now, I got just, some just... friends in Tulsa. I wonder if he might know. Where are you going? I want to say hello to your nephew. No, you can't go in there. Why not? Well, we're fumigating it. It just ain't safe. Oh, all right. I won't go inside. But I want some cigarettes out of the machine. I'll get them for you. Just give me the quarter. You feel all right? Sure. Well, it seems to me you're kind of jumpy on edge. I thought all you Westerners were supposed to be relaxed and easy going. Now, look, you want them cigarettes. You just have give... no trouble, Uncle? No. No, no trouble. This fella just wants some cigarettes is all. What brand? Chesterides. There you are. Thanks. Oh, here, don't you want the money for him? You give it to my uncle here. Yeah, sure, here you go. Thank you. If that's all now... Say, uh, I understand you're from Tulsa. That's so? I got a good friend down there, Clem Welke. I uh, thought maybe you know him. Afraid not. Look, if there's nothing else now, you... Been just... there about a year. He's working on that new electric plant they're building down there. But I guess he'll be out of a job before long, though. Understand they'll have the plant done by the end of the month. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's about finished. Now, look, mister... Surprise, you... you never met, Clem. But Tulsa's a big town. Yeah, it's a big town. Come on, Uncle, let's get that stuff moved. Well, I guess I'll drift on down the road and sleep out tonight, maybe. I got my sleeping bag. Now, probably see on my way back, I guess. Yeah, you do that. There was only one thing wrong with the whole setup. To the best of my knowledge, there wasn't any new electric plant in Tulsa. I drove on past Primrose Camp two miles farther to the end of the road. It was narrow, unpaved, and for the most part bound by a straight drop-off on one side and a vertical cliff on the other, with no chance for a car to turn off. There were two fire roads for access by the Forest Service, actually nothing more than narrow trails. The turnoffs were blocked by steel cables padlocked between heavy metal posts. As far as I could tell, they hadn't been tampered with, and no car had turned into either of the trails for a month or more. It added up to one thing. There was simply no place in the area where the Nitsen gang's car could be hidden. Yet I was still certain that they were here, somewhere. An hour later, I'd left my car at the road and was lying on a rocky ridge 300 yards or so above Primrose Camp, watching the place through binoculars and seeing nothing of any importance. Two cars stopped. Sightseers, apparently. One driver had the water checked and left. A couple got out of the other car and spent 20 minutes in the lunchroom and came out and drove off. Pop Bardell came outside occasionally. His wife, too, a couple of times. But Bardell's daughter, whom Jake Meager had told me about, didn't show. Neither did the mysterious nephew. I kept on watching Howdy, stranger. Hmm? Hunting something now, yeah? Oh, uh, no, no, not exactly. You look like you was. I'm <laughs> just admiring the view. A city fella, ain't you? Guess you can tell one every time, can't you? Kid, when you lived alone in the mountains as long as I have, then them duds you're wearing, too. Got them at Dave Bright store, didn't you? That's right. <laughs> Dave outfits a lot of you eastern fellas. Can always tell stuff that comes from Dave's. It's got a look about it. Hey, uh, you wouldn't be a prospector, would you? Forty years of it, son. You live up in these parts somewhere? A six mile across the canyons there. Got a cabin I built myself and some claims of mine. Ain't been there for three weeks, though. Oh, is that so? No, been prospecting over toward the Rincons. Heading back home now. You're the first living soul I've seen. You haven't heard any news, then, in the last three weeks? Who? Oh, my name's Johnny Dollar, by the way. Jed Marsh, proud to know you, son. How do you? Sized you up before I spoke to you and decided to take a chance. Mighty glad uh, to find you ain't a uh, smart aleck like a lot of them city fellas. Oh, it takes all kinds to make a city, Mr. Marsh. I reckon so. Never could see why it takes some kind, so. Hmm. There's Pop Bardell out in front of the station. Usually stop by and say howdy to him, but I reckon I'm going to pass it this time. Known Pop long? About 14 years now. Well, then you must know his family pretty well. Well, aside from his missus, there ain't no family except their daughter, Jenny. No, I was thinking of his nephew in Tulsa. He ain't got no nephew, Mr. Tala. Oh? I understood he had. 
He ain't got no living kin at all, except for some cousins in Virginia. Oh, I guess I was misinformed. Yep, that's for sure. Pop's a real lone wolf. Used to be a prospect himself years back, but he never really had the knack for it. Anyhow, he, he finally bought this here Primrose camp and settled down to a civilized way of living. I'd say he got about as far away from civilization as he could. A compromiser, that's what he is. Always fooling himself. I told him that a lot of times. He even keeps on prospecting off and on right around the camp there when he knows there ain't no pay dirt on this rock. <laughs> well, that's like a city man growing vegetables in a window box, I guess. Son, I wonder if I can ask a favor of you. Well, sure, what? I was aiming to go on down there and get Pop to do it, but I'll have to stay all evening if I do, and I'm kind of hankering to get home. Well, if it's anything I And, of I course, can... if I go to the authorities, they'll keep me around asking questions, making statements. What are you talking about? If there'd been any signs of life, anything I could do to help, you understand. Mr. I... Marsh, what are you getting at? Well, over across the ridge there, in the bottom of the canyon, there's a car half buried under a rock slide. <laughs> All right, easy, Mr. Marsh. We don't want to start the rest of that rock coming down. I've been moving rock all my life, son. Here we go. All right, it's clear. Let her go. Now, that's good. I can get the car door open now. Watch yourself, sir. They had it pretty well buried, all right. Who do you mean by they, Mr. Uh, Dollar? It doesn't matter at the moment. Give me a hand, will you? Let's get this guy out. That's fine. We'll lay him here on the side of the car. It's like I figured couldn't be anybody left alive after rolling all the way down that slope. This one wasn't alive before the car rolled down. What? He was shot by the state highway police. Mr. Dollar. They did a good job of hiding the car, temporarily at least. It couldn't have been seen from the air. The only way of finding it was to stumble onto it the way you did. You ain't up here just for pleasure, are you, Mr. Dollar? I'm an insurance investigator. I'm after a stick-up gang who've killed two bank guards and a state highway trooper. This man was one of the gang. There ain't nobody else in the car here. Is he the gang? There were four of them to start with. This is the second one who's been shot to death. There are still two to go. Where you figure they are? At Primrose Camp. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a lion's den reluctantly opens its door to let a trusting victim step inside. And the victim? Me. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.